Oh, goodness. So things sort of kicked off there. I'm not sure why. It's having such a hard time. I don't even know how far back it was when that kicked off. Oh, well, that's too bad. Well, you all can see how much work I've done now. Um, before I started streaming today, I, the streaming software I used needed to update, so I'm worried that that's maybe causing problems with it. But anyway, I have no idea where when it kicked off or what was going on, so I don't know what I was saying, what you heard, what you didn't hear, what you saw or didn't see. So I'm try I'm not going to repeat myself though. <laughs> I don't want to be boring. Anyway, we're still working on our on our onion guy. Um I'm just about finished with him. Just uh, filling in. Wanted to give him like a little little blush almost on his cheeks. And we're going to finish up his last layer over here. I feel like for this guy, I may have made a mistake of making him too bright yellow. Um, but not much I can really do about that right now. What's done is done. It doesn't look too bad. All right, so let's do his arms a little bit. Give him just the tiniest touch of brown of Sienna on his arms here, and his hands. Just to give it a little bit, you know, differentiate it a little bit from his body. There we go. So we're getting him all finished up here, and then I think we'll move on to a uh, a different picture. Hmm. You know what? I think we're gonna give him. No, we're gonna get just a little bit darker on the hands here. Not too much. Just enough that it's you know noticeable, but not that it's overwhelming. Give him some shadow here in his hand. There, put some shadow underneath his arm because this part is on the rounded side of his body, so it's going to be a little bit in shadow anyway. Do over here a little bit. There we go. Okay, last part, we need to do his nose. Now, I'm not too sure what color it is in the game, but I think what I'm going to go with, I think it might be kind of like a little purpley, like a little, maybe like a plum kind of color, so that's what I think I'm going to go with. Um, so I'm going to use this, this plum pencil and then I have a, a purple one to do like a little bit of shadow a little bit of I don't blush on it come on pencil sharpener work with me here now well, it's better than it was so I think what we're gonna do is we're going to put a shadow right there I'll color the rest of this in oh I don't want to forget his eyelids either I'm going to do that real quick. You know, we'll, put, we'll do like what we did over here. We'll put a little bit of brown. A little bit of brown on the bottom. And then we use this harvest yellow to blend it a little bit. Make it a little bit more yellow. 
There we go. Now it's differentiated from his face skin. That's good. <laughs> now let's finish his nose here. Oh man, I think I might have sharpened this a little bit too, too much, too fine of a point. It's making it look scratchy. You can see where the pencil lines are. And put some a little bit of shadow down here. There we go. Blend it in a little bit so it's not too stark of a contrast. Excellent. Now let's fill in his uh, his little nose, his little nose bubble here. Or you know what? We could just leave it leave it white. That might be a good idea. Actually, I think that is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to leave it white so it looks like there's like the light reflecting right on his shiny, shiny round purple nose. Okay. Well, I think that means that this picture is finished. It looks good to me. Um, yeah. All right. And move on to another picture today. Mm. All right. But before we do that, I'm going to take a quick break. I just need to drink some water. <clears> throat> throat's getting a little, a little sore. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Before we move on, I need to put all my equipment away because I don't want to leave my desk a mess. It'll be difficult for me to get anything done. I'll put all my pencils back in their pencil holsters. Okay. Perfect. All right. So, for today's, you know, kind of bigger drawing. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to draw kind of like a uh, kind of like a battle, kind of like a fight, one of the the boss fights that Cuphead does in the game. Mm. Except I'm not going to draw one of the bosses from the game. What I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to uh, draw a. Oh, I'm going to terribly mangle this when I pronounce it. A Yog Shogoth. I think that's what it's called. Um, it's, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, it is a, uh, oh, you know what? That's not the right one I'm thinking of. Um, the, the Lovecraftian entity that I'm trying, or that I'm trying to think of is a, uh, it's a, uh, Well, it's difficult to explain since it's like an otherworldly being, 
but it's kind of like imagine a bowl of spaghetti um, except it's moving around and wiggling and it has thousand it has just eyes appearing and disappearing whenever it needs them and it has you know it, it reaches out with unduly things I don't know tentacles <laughs> um, it's a uh, it's a really gross thing um, let's see Shoggoth that's what it's called <laughs> the Shoggoths are like um, let's see well why don't I just read the description of it from the book at the mountains of madness it says it was a terrible, indescribable thing, vaster than any subway train, a shapeless uh, a conglomerate of protoplasmic bubbles, faintly self-luminous and with myriad of temporary eyes forming and unforming as pustules of greenish light all over the tunnel-filling front that bore down upon us, crushing the frantic penguins and slithering over the grit glistening floor that it and its kind had swept so evilly free of all litter. So, in the mythos, in the mythos, what it is, is a long time ago, before man existed, uh, there was this race, this race of beings, the, uh, the elder things, the elder things came from another planet to uh, to basically colonize and live on Earth, um, and they created these beings, the the Shoggoth. Um, they're basically the Shoggoth are basically like uh, manual laborers for the elder things. They just uh, they build things and clean things and take things apart and put them together whatever the elder things need them to do the shoggoth does uh and uh eventually i believe it's talked about in uh at the mountains of madness the uh, shoggoth ended up revolting and uh attacking and uh, i think uh killing most of the elder things um, at some point in time inside there, I think during the fight, humanity was created or something like that. But, um, <laughs> anyway, that's what I'm going to draw Cuphead fighting. One of these indescribable amorphous, constantly shifting and changing beast, noodly beast with eyes and mouths and a limb forming and deforming as it needs. Sounds fun. So what we're going to do, I think, for this tableau, for this scene, is that we're going to have some, we're going to have some floating little uh, platforms that Cuphead will be jumping on. Um, like I've said, I've never played the game, but I've seen, watched the game, and I know for some of the boss battles, he has to navigate his way through, uh, uh, jump around on these different platforms, otherwise he will fall and hurt himself or something like that. We're going to have our, our Shoggoth, we're going to have it coming over here. Make it, it's pretty much the space it's going to take up. And we'll have it um, reaching out, we'll have it uh, reaching out underneath, that's why he has to be on the, uh, has to, Cuphead has to be on the platforms. Um, because if he was on the ground, the Shoggoth would be, uh, would be grabbing him. And then we'll have him, Mr. Cuphead, he will be, uh, we'll have him standing on this platform right here. Let's make his head a little bit deeper, I guess you'd say. Put his legs like that. Oh, you know what? That's, I didn't leave enough room for his body there. We'll start with the legs up. So he's got his weird shoes, his big shoes. And this is just what I'm doing is I'm just doing like a rough kind of sketch to see where things are going to be um, to get a better idea for the picture. 
about the placement. So, he's pretty small compared to the uh, the giant monster. That's okay. He's pretty small compared to most of the monsters he fights in the game. Let's see, and uh, the way that Cuphead fights is that he does like a finger gun. Choo choo, and he shoots like magical little, like little. I don't know what you would call it. Little little bullets, <laughs> little blue bullets, <laughs> little balls. All right, and then the eponymous Cuphead, the actual cup. I think I might have made him a little bit chunky. Made his pants too big. There we go, that's looking better. There's his straw. <laughs> So that's kind of our general idea of what we're going to be doing. Um, so, first off, let's, I think we're going to start with these, I think I'm going to start with the platforms, the, uh, the little hovering platforms here. And I think what I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to make them, um, I think I'm going to make them look like, uh, well, my first idea was to make them look like like spaghetti, like like noodles, like they're part of the uh, Shoggoth kind of coming off of him. Hmm. But I don't know if that would be too samey, if they were the same as what he looked like. I mean, he's taking up at least one third, if not more, of the picture already. So do I really want more of the same? Hmm. I think what I'll do instead is, oops, I broke the lid off my pencil. I think what I'll do instead is make these like rocks. Like, uh, like kind of like stones. Um, and then I think what I'll do is I think I'll have little, uh, little noodle guys carrying them. Like, like they're uh, like they're carrying them and walking down on top of this patch of noodles. Yeah, that's looking, it's looking rockish. I'm gonna put some uh, something like that to make it look more, more uh. Geologic, <laughs> I guess. Mm -hmm. How you would say it. <laughs> there, so that's kind of like a, kind of like my rock. Here, we'll give it a little, some underneath it and some coming out from the sides to make it kind of look like it's, uh, has some depth to it. Make it kind of look like it's flat on top, I guess, so you can stand. There we go. That's our first rock platform. Let's go ahead and do the other rock platform over here. Um, give it kind of... I want to draw like just basically connecting straight lines together. Um, I know that this platform is a little bit bigger than that one. That's gonna just have to be okay. <laughs> Sometimes when you're working, you just have to make concessions that it's not all gonna be exactly correct. Otherwise, you will be working on it forever. And give it a little bit of depth so it doesn't look like he's just standing on. I don't want it to be. <laughs> this is funny if you're drawing a cartoon, but I don't want it to be 
completely two-dimensional. I want it to look like he's actually standing on something, not just uh, standing on nothing at all. And I don't know how old this uh, knee eraser is. It's uh, it's pretty probably several years old. Um, but it seems like it's still working, at least. <laughs> Not falling apart yet. Let's make let's put something in here to cover up these gaps, kind of make it look like this part of the rock just chipped away. There we go. Nice and crumbly looking. there. That was like a rock, kind of. I think I may have put too many lines in here. I think I'm going to erase this one. I'm going to tidy this up just a little bit. I know that it is possible for rocks to be smooth, but these ones are pointy and jagged. We're going to have enough smooth lines when it comes to drawing all the noodle things. Maybe instead of having something carry this, we'll just kind of, let's see. In the game itself, a lot of things, if they were flying or whatnot, had little propellers on them. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll draw some propellers. Hmm. Should I put it at the bottom? At the side, at the front. Let's see. I think I'll do it at the. Oh crap! I think I'll put it right here. We'll put our propellers. I mean, it is a cartoony game, so I guess it should still look cartoony, right? How does draw one? How does one draw a propeller in motion? I guess like possibly like that. That does not look correct. Hmm. What if I just drew kind of like motion lines like this? Yeah, it doesn't really look like a power, propeller to me either. It looks like sparks, something similar to that. Okay, I have one more idea. Since I can't seem to draw a propeller in a way that makes me happy, I'm just going to change. I'll do something else cartoony. I think what I'll do... is... Put some balloons on it. That's how it's floating. Power of balloons. <laughs> One balloon at each corner, probably. It's probably enough to keep it afloat. Heck, it's a cartoon, right? You can do whatever you want. <laughs> that seems to be working. Of course, when I go in to do the inks, I'll uh, make these a little bit, I might make them a little bit bigger. There we go. That's a weird oblong balloon. <laughs> what do you guys think? Does that look okay? It's floating by being pulled by balloons. 
mean, it doesn't make any more or less sense than having a piece of rock being pushed by a propeller. I guess, let's see, the first time one of these creatures, Shogoth, was in literature, I want to say, was at the Mountains of Madness. Um, that story is about some explorers. They are exploring um, Antarctica. Um, and uh, they come across some, um, some elder things that have been frozen. Um, they're not sure what they're looking at. They take one. Um, it's all frozen. They take it to. They take it into their base, um, and then, like in the night, it def, 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 bleh, it thaws, <laughs> and it comes alive. I think it kills a bunch of their people or something like that, and runs off. And they're stuck, and they go exploring, and they end up finding the Shoggoth and it attacks them. Mm, coffee. Hmm. Okay. So that basic part right there is done. I think what we'll do is we'll tidy up our our hero here. It's a little bit harder to draw him so small. But I will do my best. That's all I can ask for myself is just try my best here. I guess the idea is to make him look small in comparison to the giant monster, so it shouldn't be too hard or shouldn't be too worried about the, the finer details. I still want it to look good though. Like making my uh, it's a good thing I practiced drawing him so before. So now I have kind of a better idea of what his shape is, what the details need to be like. Especially shoes. Shoes are just shoes have always been hard for me to draw. I'm not sure why that is. Okay, so that's... I think this hand is a little bit too... or that arm is too... too thick. He has... he has rubber hose arms that are supposed to be thin and wiggly. Alright, we'll draw his little finger gun here. <laughs> there we go, there's his little finger gun. Oh, got some of that burnt sienna ink on my finger. Looks kind of like I got cut. <laughs> okay, Cuphead. Let's do your other arm now. You have it behind you. And a clenched fist. Because he's focusing. There we go. That, that looks okay. Maybe a little bit too stubby. I'll, get, I'll make the finger crevices a little bit longer. But let's see. He has his hand like this, so we just sort of see the bumps. I think that's okay. Alright, we'll do a straw now. It's a very important part of him. His uh, his personality, I think. Mm. 
All right. You know what? Let's make his cup. Let's make the top of his cup a little bit visible. Put the handle on. I love this mechanical pencil. It's the it's like the lead is just so thick. Makes it harder for me to break it, <laughs> which is a uh, definitely a problem with mechanical pencils. Now let's get his big eyes. He is he is focused up to his nose and his mouth. He's still smiling though, even though he's focused. Ooh, looks kind of mean. <laughs> All right, we gotta do his pupils. Now, from this distant, this size, I think it would be too hard to do the Pac-Man mouth. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do it like that. Still think that he his body is too wide, so I'm gonna cut cut some of his weight. I might have also made his torso too long, but it's my own picture, so I'm not gonna worry about it too much. There we go. You know, why don't we add like a little, like a little bam? A little flourish here. <laughs> That's kind of what it looks like when he's when he's shooting things. <laughs> it's like a little like a little pop around his hand. All right. Now, I know I'm just going to go over this with pen later, but I'm going to fill in his body just a little bit to help me get an idea how he's looking. Hmm. Not terrible. <laughs> All right, on to the Shoggoth. Ooh. Hands are getting tired. So let's see, for this guy, we need to have lots of big, goofy cartoon eyes and a goofy cartoon mouth. Hmm. Where to start? I think I'm going to start by giving him two, doing his eyes first. I'm gonna make his eyebrows like big checkpoints. <laughs> Makes him look kind of sad, maybe. But we'll turn it into angry eyes like this. There we go. Angry eyes. Put his. Give him the little Pac Man eyes. Since he's bigger than Cuphead, we have the space for it. Now, since he has, in this description, he has extra eyes, we're going to give him some extra eyes too, but they're also going to be mad. <laughs> I'm going to have them all kind of staring over in Cuphead's general direction, though.
This will look better once we add the details. Right now I know it looks just kind of weird. It's just cartoony, cartoony looking eyes. <laughs> and we'll give him, <laughs> we'll give him big, like, cartoon lips. <laughs> I think that'll look funny. Um, <laughs> what I think I want to do though is, um, I think I want to find like an example of like cartoony looking lips. I just need to think what might be appropriate. I know, we'll give him a big droopy nose first. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now right here, make him kind of... Hey, I'm mad at you. Kind of looks like a mustache right now. I swear it's gonna be mouth. <laughs> Let's see. How do I want to do this? Hmm. Thinking. I think this is how I'm going to do it. There, and that's big cartoony lips. Getting strange. Oh, you know what? You won't even be able to see this because his mouth is in the way. Let's give him some some angry teeth. some stretch lines around the bottom of his frown. And the thing that's going to make this, I think, stand out is I think we need to... Let's see, we're probably going to just fill this in with, like, noodly bits, right? Hmm. You know what? I want to incorporate a penguin in here somehow. Maybe the Shoggoth is throwing penguins, or spitting penguins. I could redo his mouth, maybe. Hmm. Maybe not. I'll think about it. But one of the things they talk about in the book is that it forms and creates limbs whenever it needs them. So maybe he has... A, bit, a hand coming out of his forehead. We'll give it like a like a long wiggly noodle. Oh, we'll add the wiggle lines in to make it look like it's. Woo! <laughs> And what is this hand doing? Let's see. Maybe it was. Maybe it's gonna be trying to. Maybe it's gonna be trying to slap. Slap him. 
Hmm. Well, I think that might work. First, I'll draw the glove. He's got to be wearing a glove, right? That's probably the most essential part of this. Get his fingers in here. Let's make this part a little bit round, more rounded. Hmm. This looks weird. Why does this look weird? I guess what I need to figure out is what angle I'm going to have the hand going at. Is it going to be like this? Like slapping down? Or maybe like this? Flick? Like flicking him? Maybe it's like going to go like try to flick cup head? Hmm. Or maybe like a fist, like he's gonna pound him. That might work. Like a fist thing. Let's see. How are we gonna draw a fist? I think what we'll do is we will do a thumb. Oh, we gotta make those fingers a little fatter. not looking quite right of one more idea of what I can do I think I might just be making it too close to the top of uh, this area I've left for myself to color in and I think that's making me try to draw his hand too cramped I'm drawing it too small, I guess I would say. So let's try again. So first, thumb. Now, fingers. bottom of the hand tuck the hand like that hmm nope now it just looks like Admit, I am getting a little frustrated with myself trying to get this to look perfect. Slap him. Hmm. 
Got us. Tell y'all what, I'm gonna take a quick break and I will be right back. Five minutes. Okay, sorry about that. I am back. And I am going to finish this hand. <laughs> Let's see. So, if we're going to make this hand look like it's slapping, what we need to do is do it kind of like this. Now, I want it to be kind of back, like it's gaining, like it's coming down. So I want the fingers to be bent back a little bit, but they need to be all kind of in a row. So have the thumb like that. We'll have the other fingers coming from behind it like this. There we go. That looks a little bit better to me. Now it looks more like it's coming down. <laughs> I don't know why doing that hand was so difficult. Hmm. But it was. But now I've finished it. <laughs> So next I'm going to work on over here and what I'm going, I think I'm going to do for this kind of bottom part, I think I'm going to draw one long wiggler, kind of like this. And I think I'm going to have lots of little hands coming up off of it. like so and in the story it does say that it grows appendages when it needs them and right now it needs them to try to grab a cup head so that's what they're going to be doing I'm gonna have to draw a bunch of hands. <laughs> That's that'll take a while, but I still have another hour for this particular stream. This one's gonna be a short, short little arm there. Alright. 
that's what that wiggler that's what that that bottom part's gonna be I'm gonna put up our hands on there I think what I need to do now is to I think for my benefit I need to work on giving this guy his uh, excuse me more of his body more of his general shape In that way he will start looking he'll start looking a little bit more pulled together I guess is how I would say it so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just draw a bunch of interconnecting wiggling thick lines so first we're gonna draw one here we're gonna have this kinda going I wanna have this look like it's sprouting out from behind so I'll have this thick line coming over it like that There we go. Nice and wiggly. We'll then have another one growing underneath that. Like so. It'll be going underneath his eyebrows. Because I kind of want his eyebrows to sit on the top layer um, to me nothing says cartoony more than like eyebrows that aren't really attached to anything There's our weird looking noodle man. He's starting to appear. Our blobby guy. Blobby and noodles. It's In the game Call of Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth, you actually fight one of these kind of monsters um, in a factory. And you don't, well, I mean, you don't really fight it because you can't really shoot a giant Amorph amorphous blob so much doesn't really do much to it um, and that's pretty much all you can like those are your weapons it takes place like in the I want to say the 1950s maybe um, so it's not like you have like laser guns or anything like that um, but so it's kind of like a puzzle more than a boss you have to figure out how to defeat it and it turns out the way that you do is that it's hap it just so happens to be sitting in uh... inside of like a like a bunch of water like in a vat um, it was used for something in the factory i don't know if it's actually told, told you what it is but Basically, you electrically, you, you you add electricity to the water and shock it away, Just burn it up. <laughs> Angry Noodle Man. What do you guys think? I think this is turning out okay. It's definitely weird looking. I'll give you that. I think I'm going to bring one. I'm going to bring it all the way around like that. I'm kind of worried now that these eyes are going to get lost in the picture. Um, Maybe once I color it in, it won't look quite so strange. Or maybe they'll like stand out a little bit better. You 
you know what, let's... Part of me thought that this noodle was going to come out and go back overneath the noodle that went over it, but I think that might be a little bit too visually confusing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring another one instead down here. There we go. I've noticed I've stopped talking because I'm <laughs> focusing on drawing all these noodles. <laughs> but I don't want dead air, so I need to keep talking about something. Um, I really like the, the stories of H.P. Lovecraft. Um, not all of them are about... Cthulhu, who is, I guess, still currently having his day in the limelight. <laughs> um, there are other monstrosities in his stories that, that, that come out quite often. Um, but as well as some other ones that, you know, like not all of his stories are just about like monsters like this. A lot of the scariest, or a lot of, I think, some of the best ones um, are the ones that are not about the, co or they're not, like, the cosmic horror ones. Um, there's, our, there's our wiggly, there's our wiggly guy. <laughs> oh, hello, Chuckle Headley. <laughs> He does look like a lot of spaghetti. Um, he's, so, he's supposed to be a Shoggoth from H.P. Lovecraft's At the Mountain of Madness. He's basically just a big blob that makes eyes and, and hands and whatever it needs. Just undulating mass. Mm. Coffee. Oh, I made my coffee really sweet today. I don't normally do that. But I did. <laughs> All right, let's see. I'm gonna need to work on his. Uh, I'm gonna work on all these uh, gloved hands down here that he has made to uh, snatch up Cuphead if he falls off, falls off of his uh, his balloon perch. Well, first, I'm gonna do the easy part uh, for all of them doing like the uh, the ring of the glove that part's pretty easy to draw and so when you have to get down and draw all the fingers that is difficult I don't know why I did this to myself drawing hands is so hard even if they are in gloves <laughs> <laughs> what I'll probably do is I think I'll give these angry eyes some big bushy eyebrows you know the extra eyes over here <laughs> all right I'm putting it off I know <laughs> Here it comes, the hands. Let's see if I can if I can do it. <laughs> That's weird looking. I think I made this one too stubby. I can always say that they're like half formed, I guess, but um, I don't know. I guess I want them to look kind of good at least. <laughs> mm. 
Let's see, make this one kind of look like it's uh, like curling its fingers trying to grab on. <laughs> and this one, I'll make this one uh, right handed this time. made it left-handed anyway I just made it facing the other direction <laughs> all right here we go hand number four <laughs> someday I'll play cuphead and I'll probably get very frustrated and quit <laughs> Let's make this one kind of like bending back. Give the big thumb. And we'll put the fingers. I don't know what the heck that. <laughs> I don't know what the heck that one's doing. I guess it's doing like this, kind of. Like bending like that. Who knows? Oh, I think I might need to change my music. Let me just give me one minute, y'all. Uh oh. Let's see. What kind of music should I put on? I think I am going to um, put on banjo kazooie. Why not? <laughs> something nice and something goofy. I was talking about it earlier, so why not listen to it now? So, these gloves are going to be kind of interlapping, overlapping, interlapping, that's not a word. I tried to replay Banjo-Kazooie not too long ago, and I don't know, I guess the nostalgia factor wasn't strong enough. Um, I got bored playing it honestly <laughs> um, it's it's uh it gets repetitive just uh you're just running around collecting things I mean it's not a bad game I just do the same thing over and over <laughs> Now that I'm thinking about it, though, a lot of games I play have you doing the same thing over and over again. Um, enter the Gungeon. You're running pretty much. You're doing pretty much the same thing every time. Um, Dark Souls. You probably you end up doing the same thing every time because you keep dying and you have to redo it. Or that Fortnite game that I've been playing a lot recently. I mean, literally, it's the same map. It's it's the same thing. Um I don't know why it hasn't occurred to me until now, but um I guess you could argue that it's different each time cuz you're playing with different people and uh different things happen to you, but you're still going through the same motions every time. Um Let's see what is this hand doing?
<laughs> There's all my, all of uh, the Shoggoth's crazy hands trying to reach up and grab Mr. Cuphead there. Hmm. I think for the most part that's looking okay. <laughs> I mean, it's weird, but I think it looks okay. Let's see. I think I should probably add in some parts where, like, uh, there's some of the things that, that Cuphead, that he, like, shoots. I just kind of forget what shape it is. I want to say that it's, like, a triangle. Like, he shoots, like, a like a, like a little pyramid, maybe. Um, or maybe it's just kind of like a little bolt of energy. Hmm. I know that he can get a power-up that makes him shoot, um three like pink triangle shapes but I want to do it more that he's shooting like the, the his regular his regular thing um, which I think really is just like a little bolt little bolt of light let's see I think it's something like that. It'll look better when I color it in. <laughs> right now, it's not looking anything fancy. All right. So I got my rough draft done. Step number two is going to be uh, I want to do the ink around this uh, around the lines, basically fill it in, make it look a little bit better. Let's see. I'll use my point one. My point, this one's the thicker one. I'm gonna use those for the big. I'll use the thick pen for the big noodles. I'll use the smaller one for Cuphead himself. Let's looking through my uh, box of pens here, making sure I'm grabbing the right ones. That one, medium. I'll be good for background and okay I think this will work first thing I'm gonna do these noodles oh. it's cold in my house I should have turned up the heat a little bit Ooh. fingers are getting stiff all right Shoggoth Let's do this. Let's ink you up. First, we're going to ink this wiggly noodle arm of yours. There we go. Afterwards, I'll go through and I'll erase all the uh, the erroneous pencil lines. Let's get this glove going here. There we go. <laughs> There's our kind of glove. I'm going to put some little hash marks to show that it's kind of like the palm. The palm of the glove. <laughs> Alright, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these eyes. Hmm. Let me do his face eyes first because I kind of know what I want out of those. There we go. There's one eyebrow. Kind of looks like the Nike sign. Just do it, Cuphead. There we go. 
Now let's do his angry eyes. And <laughs> let's fill in his little Pac-Man pupils. There, this looks good. Let's fill in this eyes. Make me feel better if I can get one part that like looks like it's done. So I'm just gonna focus on doing these eyes first. That way, I have kind of something. I don't know. I can look at it and say, "Look, that eye is done. It's looking good." <laughs> And we'll do the other one. Okay. Mm. I think I really am addicted to that Fortnite um, video game. Uh, I feel like I want to play it all the time. Um, it's really difficult, though. It's... I don't know if I have explained it properly last time, but... It's basically you against 99 other people. And that's not super true because they're all, they're all killing each other off too. But, I mean, only one, one out of every 100 people win a game. So, the chances are stacked against you. The odds are not in your favor. Um, let's get this mouth going here. I'm worried that this doesn't. I'm worried that these rocks don't look cartoony enough. But I'm not sure how to make rocks look cartoony other than, I guess, giving them eyes. <laughs> I mean, I could do that. Like, almost everything. Almost everything has eyes in the cartoony world. Let's put these angry teeth in. I don't know why I'm calling them angry teeth, like, the teeth themselves are not angry. They're literally just lines. I'm going to use a slightly, slightly smaller size pen to do these, um, these, like, wrinkles on his lips. There. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty goofy looking. Alright, let's do these other eyes. How do I want to do eyebrows on these ones? Let me get some. Just let me think. Let me grab some paper real quick. So let's see, right now I have them like this. But I think I want to give them eyebrows to make them, the eyes stand out from the rest of the noodles. What if I did... Eyebrows kind of like this. You give them like big bushy kind of eyebrows, like like two little caterpillars. I don't know that the rounded shape will just blend in with the noodles. I think. What if I did sharp eyebrows like uh, well, the problem is I don't want them to look too closely like the main eyes.
Hmm. Okay. What if I did the eyes like this? Yeah. Okay. Angry eyes, and then I did this. But that doesn't go with the aesthetic of anything else. Let's give it another try. I keep <laughs> catching myself furrowing my brow, like... I myself am, am a am grumpy, and I don't even know what that is. Hmm. I think I may just have to leave them how they are. Yeah. Mm. I don't think they look. I don't think they look good at how they are right now. Just do I might just do that. I don't know. No. They're just going to stay regular. Regular eyes. They will be differentiated from the noodles when uh, I color it in. And also the big black pupils, I think, will uh, make them stand out. Wonderful. <laughs> My problem with drawing fan art, I think, is that it's so unlike what I normally draw. Normally I draw very abstract things. Um, and that way, if it looks bad, well, I mean, nobody will know if it doesn't look exactly like how I thought because it's abstract. It doesn't look like anything in particular. But when you're drawing fan art, people will know that it's different than, uh, whoops, people will know when it looks wrong. I guess that's what worries me about it. Mm -hmm. Let's get these big noodlies, get them on here. Although I will say it is fun to draw like old timey cartoons. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Let's get the 
this one on here. I think my the trick is going to be to get the uh, the eyes to be stand or er, to be in front of in front of the noodles, like they're pushing out. Um, And pushing out from the blob, from the mass. <laughs> Calling in things or like uh, doing the lines like this, it's hard to think. <laughs> it's hard to know which line to do first. <laughs> Because as you can see, I keep getting carried a, carried down the page. Um, I guess my hope is that it looks that it'll be so intricate that people won't notice that some of the noodles don't uh, don't always match up perfectly. <laughs> I think once I add color to it, it'll be okay. There we go. It's starting to starting to come come around. It's starting to to come through. Ooh, my stomach's grumbling. I probably should have eaten more for breakfast than I did. I have some delicious leftovers from dinner. A couple nights ago, I made like a creamy, a creamy pasta uh, with uh, spinach and tomato. That turned out really good. I put a little bacon in there too. Originally, the recipe was for it to be vegetarian, but um. Well, I just thought bacon, like a little bit of bacon bits would taste great in it, and it they do. They taste wonderful. Um. <laughs> this music's really silly. All right, we're getting these noodles underway. Oh, I'm gonna feel I'm gonna feel really good when this is finished. Fingers are getting cold. It's a good thing I don't live someplace really cold because then I would uh, be complaining even more about it. <laughs> See, like this particular piece of noodle doesn't have anything that connects to in the mass, but it does fill in that space. Um, <laughs> and hopefully, like I said, once everything is finished, once it's all colored in and uh, all the wine's been finished and everything, I'm thinking that it will look so complicated that that people will not you know, realize that, that it doesn't all quite fit together. Hmm. Thinking about what I should eat for lunch today. I'll probably just have more of those leftovers because they're very good. And also, it, I hate it when leftovers like get left in the fridge forever and then like eventually go bad. It's, uh... So I'll probably just eat those. 
All right. I'm nearly finished with these particular, this particular part. Let's put one more noodle coming down this way. Hmm. That's not half bad if I do say so myself. <laughs> it's so weird looking. Alright, time to do all the baby hands. First we'll do the long tentacly part. Mm. Goodness. If this ever becomes a very, like an actual serious kind of career or job, if I actually get viewers, like lots of viewers, I will definitely need to buy a better camera and find a better way to um, to position it up above. I realize right now the way that I have my camera set, it's uh, it doesn't give me a lot of um, space to work with. I guess like it's very the window is very small. It's too close. Um, I need it to be up a little bit higher. Um, but right now I'm not really sure I have a way to do that there we go these are starting to look okay I mean I definitely wouldn't want to fall down into this pit of weird glove hands it probably cost me at least one heart of health or one playing card <laughs> whatever um, whatever they use for health in, in the game I think they might be playing cards with hearts on it seeing as gambling's kind of like a kind of like a theme throughout the game and it's what got cuphead in trouble in the beginning of the, the beginning of the story he was uh playing craps or roulette i think it was probably craps um and uh <laughs> he ends up like betting his soul and losing it to the devil <laughs> there we go almost finished with the arms just goes to show you kids that gambling not good idea Especially not gambling with the devil. <laughs> there. Oof. Weird. All right, I'm gonna put the uh, the eight point away. I think maybe I'll use the five point for this for these uh, hands. That way, it's still the lines are still still broad lines but it's a little bit easier to work with when you have small spaces <laughs> I'm pretty sure this music is from like the uh, from like the Christmas level in Banjo-Kazooie I mean, it has sleigh bells in it, so one would assume that it was like Christmassy. You take a drink real quick. Mmm, delicious. I think when I started replaying the game, I don't know if I even got as far as the Christmas level. I might have quit before then. The whole like collect the thon genre, I guess, um, more or less went away for a little while. 
It was very popular when I was little, but recently there haven't been too many kind of those games. They came out with the uh, spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie called Ukulele. And it got some really bad reviews, and people were saying, like, yeah, this is fun, but this is. Collecting all these things really isn't quite what I want and to do anymore. Which I'm sure that the uh, was very frustrating for the people who made the game because they said, they were like, this is. That is what people asked for. They wanted a game that was like Banjo Kazooie. And so they made a game that was like Banjo-Kazooie and people said that it has too much collecting in it which was basically what you did in Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> oh well. Some of the uh, the Mario games are still pretty much collect-a-thons. You're collecting stars or moon sprites or or coins or something like that. There we go. And there's that independent game that just came out not too long ago called A Hat in Time. That one's supposed to be pretty good and it's it's kind of like a collect a thon game. One day I want to play that one too. It looks cute. I like cute games. I'm also always looking for games I can play with my kids. Um, video games are pretty cool, so I wouldn't mind them getting into getting into playing games. But I just want to find some that are like appropriate for their skill level, which is not very high. <laughs> um, I guess I could like sit down and train them, um, train them how to play. But I don't know if I don't I don't even know if they have I don't know if they have the like the ability to to do that yet. Like the coordination to. Or just not, I don't want to say the intelligence, but like, um, like the, the, the ability to understand that what you do with your hands for the controllers translate to what the character does, um, on the screen. I don't know, they'll probably be able to figure that one out. To add these little, uh, these little parts on the gloves. These little dashes and whatnot. What are those parts on the gloves? I mean, you see them. Are they just are they just like fabric? Is it just like part of the design of the glove, or is it just to? Uh, I think it's probably just to break up the uh, the view of it for the audience to make it look easier to for the audience to kind of understand what they're looking at. Okay, there's that. And get rid of this uh, these weird failed eyebrow ideas. Hey, I wouldn't know if I didn't try if they looked good or not. Let's give these wiggle lines draw them a little draw them on here a little bit better. And some movement lines here, like the hand is coming down for a slap. We should probably draw some motion lines here too. Let's see. There we go. Now it looks like they're all they're all waggling about in a in a kind of crazy chaotic way. Okay. Now, in order to make the um, the uh, uh, bendiness of these noodles look a little bit better, I think I'm going to put some just some like little lines on it to uh, to I guess break up the emptiness inside of the noodles, but also to give it a sense that it's kind of 
um, being bent. Um, give it a sense to look like it's, uh, what would you call it? Like it's really, like it's wrinkling up um, as it is, uh, as it, it's uh, moving around. Like that. And give it some little lines on it. I don't know, they kind of look like veins too, I guess. Be weird. Oh, now it's time for the spooky music. <laughs> there we go. I think that's that's making it look a little bit. I don't know. It's filling it out more. If that makes any sense. I want it to look kind of alive, even though it is just a cartoon. All right, now let's see for this part. Make it look like it's it's being pulled. Like it's being stretched out. Sorry, I was holding it too close to myself again. Let's see, I'm putting in, adding in these little lines to make it seem like this part's being tugged along. I think I'm gonna give a little some some wrinkles like this. Make it look like these these hands being stretched stretched out of the body of the the noodle. And there we go. Creepy. <laughs> Let's put a few more, a few more wiggle lines, stretch lines. There. <laughs> Doesn't look too bad. All right, now let's move in. Move into the rocks. Let's use these floating platforms. Time to get them, get them all cleaned up. I think next week we'll focus on doing the colors for this one. Because right now, well, I'm kind of running out of time. <laughs> There we go. Looking, looking rockish, I think. I don't know. What do y'all think? I think that's looking all right. You know what? I don't think I'm gonna do that line right there. I think I'm just gonna leave that part. I'll we'll do the uh, the rest of the platform here, and I'm gonna move on to the other rock. I'll come back for the balloons in a minute. I think it's time. I think I, I think I made this one too, too deep. So I'm gonna change it up. I know I'm not really following the lines I laid out for myself.
but that's okay. My picture, I can do as I please with it. And if I feel like that certain part looks, I, th I think it will look better now once I, uh, once I erase those, uh, the, the pencil marks. There we go. Let's see, I don't fill in this section a little bit. And we'll put this these lines on here to kind of make it look like parts of the rock got chipped off. Coming to you in just a minute, mister. Let's do our balloons now. And there we go. Let's put some string on it like that. Like it's tied on to uh, the bottom of the balloon. And we'll do the other balloon here. There we go. I might need to put some motion lines on these balloons. I don't know. To make them look like they're traveling that way. <laughs> I'm glad I thought of the balloon idea because the propellers were not working out for me. Um, I guess I could have had the hands like carrying them across, but I think it looks better with a little bit of space there. Let's put that on up there. Balloon number one. Based on this part. You know, I wrote myself down a list of things to talk about uh, if I ever like ran out of things to say. Um... And then, like, I've been too nervous to actually talk about any of them. Um, I just wrote down, like, random things, really, um, not even having to really pertain to what I'm doing. And I guess I, I, guess I feel nervous that people will, uh, will not want to hear me talk about just whatever. Oops, I hesitated and made a little dot right there. That's okay. But probably talking about something would be better than, than just being quiet. Right? Probably. Okay. I'm going to grab my s slightly smaller size. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of reflect bleh, reflection on the... Uh-oh. My pen working. Put like some some little like reflecty things on on my balloons here. Give them more characteristics. More, more character. More characters for my balloons. I think I'm actually doing it just to fill in the space. I think it looks better if it, it's uh, all full up as much as I can. Not looking bad. All right. And now to Cuphead himself. We'll do his pants. Looking good. 
do his body. Do these arms here. I guess that's part of the body. I guess that should count. Okay. Let's do his head. Do the top of his cup here. Do his straw. Got to make sure to put those stripes on it so it looks a little bit. Covering up space. That's all we're doing. Just covering up, covering up the page. I find I get, I find that I get the best, uh, I get the best art done when I'm just focused on just covering the page. Let's do his teeth. Boop, boop, boop. Let's bring this line all the way down. We don't want to have it disconnect. Kind of looks like a. Uh, kind of looks like a skull. A little weird. Now we'll do his uh, clenched fist hand. And his shooting hand. Uh oh. Made his shooting finger a little stubby. All right. Well, there's not much I can do about that to change that right now. Let's have to uh, deal with that's how it looks now. And get his shoes all finished. There we go. Oh, you know what? We need to put, let's see if I can do it. It's very small. I'll put some treads on his shoes. There we go. Oh, that's not too bad. Let's color, cover, color in his body real quick to see if he's looking okay. Oh, I'm not using my tiny pen to color in his body. I don't want to use the huge one because I don't. Maybe it's might be a little hard to uh, be precise. I'll use the little bit of a, the bigger one. There we are. I still think I made his torso too long, but I'm not too entirely worried about that. There are worse things. Almost finished. There. All right. I think for the um, the shot and the kind of effect coming off his hand, I think I'm just going to handle that by uh, doing it in uh, when I'm doing the coloring. I'll just color those straight on without an outline. It'll probably look better anyway. Let's get rid of all these. Uh, clean it up a little bit so we see how it looks all together. Let's see. Let's a little bit more up here. Some on this eye over here. Ooh. 
not bad at all. I think that turned out rather well. Tomorrow I'll have to go in. Um, I'll have to do something for the background, I think. Um, excuse me. Like a cave of some kind, maybe? Hmm. I'm not sure, really. I mean, the story in the story it takes place inside of a cave, like an ice cave. Um, I'm not sure how I'll do that, though. In the game, the backgrounds are kind of, uh, like, painted on. Um, I guess I could get some watercolors, maybe? But I am really bad at watercolors. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out. We'll think about it. But, in any case, thank y'all for watching. I know it's a little bit, er uh, a little bit before 12. Like 10 minutes before 12, but I don't want to get started on coloring this and uh, only be able to do a tiny bit. I'd rather be able to do all of it at once. So I think I'm going to end the stream for today. I appreciate you all for watching. Um, yeah. Let me know what you think. You think this turned out good or not? Um, anyway. Uh, I'm Jeremy, this is Inky Inspiration, and I hope you have a wonderful day. My next stream will be on Friday at 9am. I'll see you there.